Hello everyone and once again welcome to E4M Pride of India brand series a unique effort to celebrate the success stories of leading homegrown brands in the country In today's episode we are glad to have with us Mr Dheeraj Gupta the founder of Jumbo King a 20 year old QSR brand known for its lip smacking vada pavs and burgers but with a twist the brand further expanded in 2018 introduced a variety of vegetarian burgers positioning itself as india's one of favorite go to snacking brands today dheeraj will be talking all about the brand its journey and the role of marketing in its success welcome dheeraj thank you mansi it's a pleasure to be here it's our uh, it's our pleasure to have you here dheeraj but let's just start the discussion Can you tell us all about the inception story of the brand Jumbo King? What inspired you to start the brand, and what was the initial thought when you began the process of creating this brand? I think uh, when we started way back in two thousand one, the idea was very simple. Uh, we wanted to create an Indian QSR uh, uh, brand. So I come from uh, a family of food entrepreneurs, as in we are the third generation in the food business. and having pursued around the management and then an mbn finance the thought was to always you know use the modern technology and the modern systems which were available of course in 2001 they were modern today they look outdated however you know use what the next age uh, stuff and uh, you know build up brand and when we looked around uh, in mumbai city vada pav was one of the largest sold, uh, selling products single largest snack which was unbranded and we said you know why not go about launching uh, this product as a brand our inspiration i have said before was mcdonalds who picked up the burgers which in america at that time were equivalent to the vada pavs and you know a very simple street side food which you know they kind of put systems around and were able to uh, scale up uh, beautifully so that's how jumbo king started great uh as you said that when you had started with jumbo king and just vada pav as your prime and only offering uh it was mostly an unbranded space there i think there weren't any of uh, brands established brands selling uh vada pavs in a restaurant like space uh also you said that your inspiration has been mcdonalds and it was also the time when these international qsr brands were trying to find a footing in indian market so what was the market situation overall like what was your analysis when you started the brand and where did you try to position yourself like a direct competition of mcdonalds or something different i think for the first uh, now the booking of course you know we have uh, repositioned ourselves we call ourselves the indian burger i will you know discuss with you why we made that switch so uh, we are a 20 year old brand of which the first 15 years we lived the life of product and then we moved to indian burger so i think uh, when we started 2001 mumbai is a large city we have close to 75 railway stations in mumbai city and each station pretty much has a famous brand of its own so you can technically say that there were 75 you know famous local vada pav sellers in mumbai city what jumbo king did was you know to create a brand which started scaling up so not only at one station we moved into every station and that is i think uh, very clearly uh, worldwide what has happened and what happened in india is that all commodities will eventually become brands right and i think that for india is a very large market huge scope there is so many things which are you know still yet to be branded and uh, the basic uh, you know uh, meaning of what a brand stands for is it is you know people it's people's trust so different brands make different promises to their end consumers and uh, those consumers buy into that promise so when we were about our brand we were talking about a hygienic vada pav and i think it was that brand promise which uh, the early, uh, you know the mumbai girls really uh, bought it to and uh, you know that is how uh, you know we were able to make a name for ourselves with with very 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 uh, you know municipal marketing budgets and uh, so i think uh, the market is very large at that time we said you know mumbai city uh, used to consume about uh, 20 lakhs units of vada pav a day and 
we said that you know even if 10% of the people would care about hygiene yeah and 90% don't so let us you know target those 10% people uh, give them the hygiene that they need and uh, with that premise we positioned ourselves as the more hygienic option uh, and, and, that's and what how was works. the what was the initial pricing points for your products when you started oh, we had started at 5 rupees Great. it was like super super low. Uh, you said that you spent minuscule marketing budgets. What was the marketing and the brand positioning strategy, uh, you know, in the first phase when you were just establishing the brand, setting up in Bombay? Yeah, so uh, see, we are not a, uh, right at the beginning, at that time, the PE and the, uh, you know, the VC environment was not very, very active. Yes. You had to build out brands with your mm -hmm. own resources. So we had allocated 4% of our total sales into marketing. And of course, the sales were small, so the four percent was, you know, much smaller. Yeah. So we did what best we could. I think we, uh, so uh, you know, we used uh, PR very, very effectively, and we used to go out and you know talk to the media about what we are doing. Mm. And we got, we were very fortunate to have got good media support. My wife Rita, she was heading a lot of those efforts, uh, you know, at that time. Now she runs an entire. Uh, it's a company of her own. Yeah. So, however, it was, uh, I think people, uh, the media liked what they were seeing mm. and therefore, they, uh, you know, sharing about it with people mm. through their newspapers, radio channels. Uh, and, and I think that is how slowly we uh, got traction. Uh, was there a lot of... Uh, it was largely word of mouth. Sorry, I couldn't get the last point to make. I think initial, I think the initial five years was largely word of mouth. Hmm. Uh, yeah. But did you invest in a lot of out of home activities as well? Maybe pamphlets or maybe, you know, holdings? Was there, was that a part of the plan? No, so we wanted to, we did not want to build as you know, now we are seeing a lot of businesses where, you know, they do large fundraisers and there's yeah. cash burn and people understand go with the assumption that they're going to do cash one for five years, 10 years and build out brands. So that was not how we were thinking. And even today, we don't think of businesses mm -hmm. in that way. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I think uh, the effort was to really understand the positioning part. What is it that the customer wants? Yeah. What is very clearly differentiating us from the other what about right? Mm -hmm. What is differentiating us from the McDonald's and the Burger King? And then finding that niche and uh, you know focusing on that niche uh, very very sharply. I think that is the biggest. Uh, 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 so uh, you know I I often say that uh, at the end of the day people choose brands, and when people are creating brands, uh, so you know you have to choose categories. It's like when we were a what about brand. So, which was, so that was the what about category which we had selected. Yes. And in all categories, you always have the number one, number two, number three player. Mm -hmm. These are the three players who mm -hmm. make money. And then there's a long tail of a lot of also hands. Mm -hmm. So we at in what about we position ourselves as the most expensive hygiene, you know, those kind of attributes. Yeah. Uh, right. And the, and that is what we kept on communicating at all mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. And somewhere in 2016, we realized that, uh, you know, the the category that you operate in, you know, sometimes tends to, tends to have limitations. Yes. So, Vada Pao as a category had a limitation of pricing power. People used to feel that Vada Pao is uh, cheap food and uh, they did not want to pay a premium for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so then we, you know, we, we, uh, at this realization came to us when at one of our stores, you know, we, we were buying from the best in class factories for the patty, for the sauces, for the breads, you know, lots of systems and processes in place. And at right next to one of our stores, there was a local burger guy, you know, who probably was not following the, you know, the hygiene standards. It, it was a local and individual operator. Yeah. And we we did, we believed a lot in market research. So we asked, went and spoke to our customers why they were choosing us, and they said that because you're not Vada Pao. 
and we also asked the people who were buying from uh, you know the next door guy they said that we are buying burgers mm -hmm. and our product at 20 bucks they were saying hey, this is expensive while the burger paying 60 rupees for it they felt it was very good value for money yeah so that's when we realized that all the automation and the systems you want to put in place putting all of those costs into the onto the product mm. uh, and then you know selling a product for 20 rupees was becoming very challenging with the kind of inflation that mm. you know we are uh, seeing so we said that you know why not we just kind of uh, move our positioning to the end in burger mm. so uh, you know I, I say that in you choose categories so we said that what about we went as the most expensive uh, what about as positioning in mm -hmm. burgers we said that let us go with the positioning of the most value for money yes right so let there be the more expensive and the premium brand. and then we take up the positioning of being the most value for money. Mm -hmm. and i think it has been a huge huge uh, a big realization very different very uh, good results for us over the last five years Mm -hmm. where we are able to you know give people the experience that they want the taste along with the quality hygiene you know service and all of those uh, you know mm -hmm. parameters where which are very important and which are aspirational for today's youngsters mm -hmm. without having to compromise on margins so how many sku's you have currently uh, under the burger open your position yeah yeah so um we start, uh, we've been a, uh, you know, strong believer of having a very, you know, good promotion and everyday promotion. In mm -hmm. case. You look at, you know, Walmart, they used to have this curbside sale on every Saturday yeah. where they would take one or two items and sell it really at very discounted prices for which they became a talk of town and people would come to them mm -hmm. and then they would sell other stuff also. Mm -hmm. Then you have, you know, McDonald's doing the Happy Meal. Yes. Uh, then, you know, different, different brands, they have their own way of expressing so we came up with this thing of uh, that uh, let us have a jumbo king of the day we call it the jk of the day mm. and that is how because there are seven days of the week we ended up having seven types of burgers yes. and the original uh the indian burger we call it the mumbai mm. burger mm. which is the new avatar of the vada mm. that continues so we have basically eight types of burgers and mm. all are vegetarian okay uh, yeah. how, why have you stuck to the vegetarian positioning of the brand? Why? Because non-vegetarian is becoming a big market in India. Yeah, I uh, I think uh, being vegetarian was more a choice where uh, you know we felt that uh, you know we would as in you know it, it was it was a personal choice that we didn't want to, you know kind of kill animals, cruelty against animals, you know all of those kind of uh, yeah. Uh, thing so you know i'm i have done two courses of vipassana and you know so there was a mm. lot of inputs around so i said that you know we can create a very large business we see this as a as a billion dollar opportunity around vegetarian so mm. that you know, we will go out and do it without having to get because i think the bigger trend which is there in the west and which will eventually come to India, is a lot of people are becoming vegan yes i think a lot of people are vegan. more people are becoming vegan than they have become non vegetarian yes so you may say, you may say that probably 10 years down the line this would have been the smartest thing to do to stick hmm. to vegetarian yes makes sense completely makes sense of uh, and what's your positioning in market like now you have explained that you had a shift in perception and you introduced burgers as well so which are the key competitors of yours right now in the market and what's the usp what's the standout point for your brand Okay, excellent question, Seema. So what, uh, so, you know, we uh, keep looking around how the large brands, brands which are built to uh, last, you know, how they get created. So I'll give you an example of, say, something, a category like pizzas. Mm -hmm. So you have, uh, you know, Pizza Hut and Domino's, which are the mm -hmm. two dominant brands in that category. Both selling pizzas, Pizza Hut gives that restaurant experience. They have a fine dining. Kind yeah. of experience and families go over there uh, with their kids to celebrate birthday parties, etc. Right? While Domino's selling the same pizza, you know, similar, they have uh, slight variations, but essentially the product is the same, price point is the same, but they super specialize and focus on delivery. Yes. 
right so in pizza same product two very different brands giving very different experiences hmm. so we said that in the burger category there will be the mcdonald and the burger king they are giving the fine dining experience hmm. right jumbo king we want we are we want to give the on the go experience we want hmm. to put up these 200 yeah. 300 square feet stores where when the person is in a rush in a hurry and wants to quickly he has a uh, capacity of time you know hmm. where he's looking for a uh, you know a decently priced hygienic tasty food that he can eat before he rushes off for his next lecture or for his next meeting or before he's boarding the metro train to go to his uh, home so that is where we said that we will be the we will become the go to option for people who are on the go and you know who are wanting to buy burgers so uh, burgers as a category mcdonalds and burger king is somewhere where you will go to the store to eat yes. jumbo king is a store which will come to you because it will be there at every uh, nook and corner hmm. and what's your marketing positioning like right now which sort of mediums are you using how much are you spending currently on marketing and how has it helped your brand to grow yeah so i think uh, when uh, building the restaurant the qsr business right so there are two things which are very important to keep in mind uh, where the rule of economies of scale applies so one is in the purchase on the supply chain side right yes. because we have only these eight types of burgers right even when we introduce a new burger we remove one of the one eight which is not working hmm. right so our menu will always remainate however there will be some variation which we keep from so this is done because we want to keep our supply chain very lean and be able hmm. to enjoy economies of economies of scale hmm. the same rule applies for marketing also so for us in mumbai like we are close to 100 stores in mumbai alone hmm. right and we see we feel that mumbai is a market of close to 300 stores for us so we feel you know that how many brands are there or rather most of the brands would have to go national to be able to put up three in this space yes so we you know have this unique advantage that within one city we can put up three in this space so we are going ahead and doing this and that's how uh, you know so we also keep it in our marketing efficiency like our ad budget for this year for mumbai city alone is about 3 crores so we've come a long way in that sense from you know having uh, the entire year's ad budget used to be 10000 rupees and we used to feel like you know we have something to play with now you know it is it is a very different ball game where uh, you know i think uh, of course the past two years of covid we did not do any advertising at all and but this year uh, as in you know i think one city three crores we will probably be one of the largest spenders in our category yes so it's a lot of hyper local advertising and are you using or are you using digital in a no, we use digital also digital is a reality and uh, if used smartly it can give great results so we do uh, a lot of the atl stuff like you know uh, we do train advertising this in audio and trains because that's where our customers are yes then uh, for our uh, so you know very clearly that we are look at the on the go so when people they are on the go what kind of stuff are they doing they are checking out the m indicator app or you know what kind of stuff uh, you know so digitally how we can target them then uh, through the atl traditional medium what can be done hmm. and uh, you know and uh, also not drown people with advertisement you know so yes. we have a marketing calendar in place hmm. so we do about four activities a year hmm. one per quarter with a clear uh, sort of reinforcing our positioning of the burger on the go and how many cities are you present in currently so now we are uh, uh, in mumbai some amount of presence in pune we have just launched tech about 6 months ago and delhi has such would done very very well for us so we will be at 10 stores in delhi by june and we have three stores in lucknow so presently so we are much. only in four cities yeah thank you so much for launching in delhi because i was in bombay for a year before the lockdown and really used to enjoy jumbo king uh, and when i came back okay. to delhi couldn't found the product so that was something right. that i was missing so thank you for launching in delhi i am going to be regular customer again 
for you. Yeah, so we are at Kashmiri Gate Metro Station. So next time you're there, uh, do definitely uh, going to grab a bite. And are you also uh, because in Bombay you were present on Swiggy and Zomato? What's the situation in other cities like right now? Yeah, so Swiggy Zomato, I think uh, we are very fortunate that the digital uh, development growth which has happened is like you know if we were an apparel brand, we did mm -hmm. not have a Swiggy Zomato food delivery for us. Yeah, we are very fortunate that we are in the food business and Swiggy and Zomato of the world have got created in the food space. Mm -hmm. So I think the entire delivery part, which we used to miss out, is now happening, hmm. right? So I think we treat them more as friends than foes. And uh, uh, so we, in fact, now with the advent of cloud kitchens, you're seeing hmm. a, you know, a lot of the cloud kitchen thing which has come up. So see, these are all, sometimes people get a lot of hype around it. Hmm. I feel that Domino's was the first cloud kitchen which got created 50 years yeah. ago. Yeah. The policy, the strategy they used was we will not put up from stores in the mm. front. We put up stores on the back side mm. and make our number famous and people will call the number and get their pizza. Today it's an app. Yeah. Right? People are saying use the app and get the food. And they're putting up stores which are on the back side of the mm. of the high streets. Right. So it is it is not new, but uh, but it's a flavor of the season. You get a lot of funding if you say you're putting up a cloud kitchen. So about uh, three months ago, uh, you know, we decided that let us have the best for both the worlds, right? Mm -hmm. We have our online store, uh, our offline stores, mm -hmm. which are two hundred square feet, three hundred square feet stores, and we said that let us make twenty percent of them into cloud kitchens, mm -hmm. which means basically they will now operate twenty four hours. Yeah. Right, and I think it has worked extremely well for us. Business at those stores has, at some of them, has doubled because of this. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And, uh, uh, and you know, getting confidence from that. So, you know, we said that, you know, let us not, we should not fight out the new technology. We should figure out how we can use it to benefit. Instead of getting worried that, oh my God, cloud kitchens are going to replace all restaurants and, you know, we are all going to be in trouble. So they are the enemy, let's fight them. I think that is probably the wrong way to look at it. Instead, wow, this is great. It's going to help us. Let us figure out how we can collaborate with them. Right? That is the way to look at it. And uh, so I think, uh, uh, you know, we are, and in fact, now we have a separate team and a separate marketing strategy for how to increase business on the cloud kitchen part of the of, of mm. what we do and the offline part of business what we do because the two mindsets are very different. Very different. The online guy is a very different mindset. The customer has very different reasons why they buy. So I think mm. we are very, uh, I think, more keen on understanding how people choose mm. right it's like if seema is traveling in mumbai mm. if she's choosing jumbo king why you know so she's looking for a quick snack and she's looking for hygiene she's looking for taste she doesn't want to fall ill so so we have to kind of fulfill that reason and uh, also understand that she's not going to consume the product every single day you know there will always be options which uh, yeah. you know one is going to buy but even in once a week she chooses to buy Jumbo King, then uh, the job is done. Yeah. So similarly, understanding the mindset of the online customer, when does he buy? Why does he choose Jumbo King? Right? So I think a lot of people, they, you know, they look at what competition is doing, look at what others are doing. We keep, you know, telling our team, because let us understand why are our customers choosing us? Hmm. Because he's made the choice. Yeah. Why did you choose Jumbo King? Exactly. So we did this uh, really interesting exercise. There's a Jumbo King store at Andheri Metro Station. Mm. And right next to us, about one feet away, is a Burger King store. Mm. So we went and, you know, we spoke to a thousand customers, uh, people who were buying at Jumbo King. We asked, you know, there's a Burger King right next to us. How come you chose Jumbo King? Yeah. And we, we were, you know, kind of understanding why they buy mm. this. And then we did a similar exercise with the Burger King customers. Mm. There's a Jumbo King here, you know, how come you uh, why did you choose to buy both? So such beautiful insights came out of how people are actually choosing. Yes. So I think research-based marketing is extremely powerful. Mm. It is time-taking. It requires a lot of application of mind. And uh, and I think as, you know, for your audience, if it, they're entrepreneurs who are uh, uh, going to be you know, watching this video, 
we you know probably get very busy with the execution side putting up stores managing the staff doing the supply chain and production and marketing is something which is seen as to us yeah outsource karo koi marketing manager pe karo and you know let them do it however i feel as so i uh, so we have a very strong marketing team but i say that my full time job is only two things one is marketing the other is new product development all the other uh, functions have been uh, you know we have got great professionals in the team yeah and i think to do a great job of uh, handling that completely agree to the last part that you said that people are spending a lot of time on execution but there's a lot in the background that happens that needs to be taken care of especially in today's time when the consumer is evolving it's the time when people are trying out newer things you know there's a lot of change in lifestyle that's happening and it's it's the right time to get the get to the nerve of the consumer and to hold them for the future uh, i think the consumers I, were always evolving otherwise I was saying consumers were mm. always evolving. Otherwise, in two thousand one, we could not have bought a car, right? Exactly. We were new. We were yes. upsetting the apple cart at that time. Yes. But and people tried, and, and the brand got created. Yeah. Yes, and today you are a big success story as well. Uh, if I ask you, what's the future looking like for you? Uh, what are your plans in terms of expansion? In terms of you know marketing and what are you trying to achieve? Or within this, within the next six months. Six months, I don't know, uh, but five years. Our so the, uh, when we complete ten years of being a burger brand, hmm. right? We uh, we hope to you know be at about six hundred and fifty stores. That is what our target is, and largely in Mumbai and Delhi. And uh, you know, I just have very small. So India is such a large country. Yes. and i think that the booking we can keep on uh, what what excites us is that uh, the united states of america with a 33 crore population has got mm. about 18000 subway stores mm. uh 30000 or 26000 i'm mi- mixing up the number but you know uh, a lot of subway stores and we said that in india with you know 150 crore people right so we can put up a lot of jumbo king stores and yes someone may argue that but there are a lot of people but not uh, necessarily they don't have that spending power yes so i say that even if 20% of them have the spending power we are still 30 crore people hmm. that's equivalent to us acre population there's so a lot it's of a huge market. market yeah yeah there's a lot of scope for growth once you realize that hmm. and uh, then you just you know focus on strategy execution great uh, all the best for that hope to see more stores coming in at many more cities and as i said i'm going to be a regular customer thank you so much for your time here it was pleasure having you with us here today thank you bye take care